at the word mandatory. Mandatory means you have to. We have to understand what it means, the word mandatory. It is, uh, you have to wear it. But if you look at the surah 24, ayah number 31, it actually starts with tell the believing women. It says, tell them. It doesn't command like they have to. There's a difference. It is just like in the food, they says, oh, you know very clearly about food. It is haram or you are not, it, it is prohibited. It's very clear about some certain things in the Quran. The, if you look at the uh, the scarf thing, it doesn't say, first of all, it doesn't use the word hijab in the Surah 24, Ayah 31, very clearly. It uses completely different word. And what it's Surah 24, Ayah 31 is about is, you know, hiding your um, breasts, your boobs, and your adornments, don't wear heels, don't walk in a way so people can know that you're a woman, you're walking, and all these things. But there is nowhere in the Quran that it speaks about mandatory uh, head covering. And if somebody says later on, no, it says, please uh, do not start with this. It doesn't. Then the burqa and niqab, um, you know, uh, culture and the way they wear it, it comes from the hadith. Because one of the uh, messenger Muhammad's wife, she went out to the nature to do the, yeah. what, you know, that he had to do. Um, one of the messenger Muhammad's followers, men, they, he followed her. Now, keep in mind, that is actually against the religion Islam, Surah 24, ayah number 30, says that men should uh, lower their gaze um, and, and be chaste. That is best for them. But here we can see that in the, in the I think, Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim, it says very clearly that the follower of Muhammad followed one of the messenger Muhammad's wife when she was going to the, you know, the, the nature to do something. And he followed her and he said, ha ha, I have seen you. So here it is not the lady, the wife of Muhammad who made a mistake. She did what she had to do, but the men followed her and who got uh, a law on their head to do something. The man did the wrong thing to follow her to begin with. He did not lower his, his gaze, but the, the law came on the woman who did nothing wrong of any sort. You see, so mm -hmm. nobody looks at the bigger big picture. And then these women, these girls, they talk about hijab, the demand, you know, that uh, some of them also say that it is not um, by force. If you look at the Iran, the country Iran, there are so many women who are fighting to, to get rid of hijab. They don't want to wear hijab. There's a girl recently, she got decapitated because she wanted to be free from her husband. She, I think she was 17 year old. She, yeah. she posted a, a picture, I believe, without um, the hijab on and the husband decapitated her because she, you know, she, she did something to their honor. She, she showed her face without the scar. I mean, where, where is the respect for women? I mean, and the court is not even willing to give him that punishment for something that the, the men did so bad, he took the life. So the point in overall in this is, there is no, nothing like mandatory hijab in the Quran. There is nowhere to be found. It says, once again, mm -hmm. tell the believing women in Surah 24, ayah number 31. Um, it does not speak about, the Quran does not speak about burqa and niqab to cover your complete face. Mm -hmm. It does not. It says in the hadith, definitely, but it does not, Allah does not command it in the Quran, plain and simple. And I would also like to share a very quick point here that hijab is like a curtain. It's a curtain between two people. Hijab is not, you can say, uh, um, a word mentioned in the Quran as a scarf. It is mentioned as a, a, a curtain be, be, like between two people. Women being so proud and thinking that this is very amazing that they are being called lioness. They are in a huge misunderstanding that they think it's a very amazing thing, uh, you know, that they are being called lioness because in Islam, the human, the, these women are considered to be kind of a meat, one thing. They are nothing but to, to be, you know, kind of used by men for product, reproduction and that's it. And slavery to be beaten up like in Surah Al-Nisa, Ayah 34. And the fact that Muhammad has said in the Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim, I can't remember exactly which one, but I can give the reference that a woman, a woman cannot lead the nation in success. If a woman cannot lead the nation in success, according to messenger Muhammad, how can you people Muslims call a Muslim woman a lioness? Because a lioness is somebody who, who actually can lead, you know, and can do much more, is very strong, very powerful. So how can you even call her a lioness? That's a big fat lie. The fact that it's happening in India or maybe the other Western countries, it's remarkable to see 
because in the Muslim countries, they want just the opposite. And I find it to be so disrespectful. And I would also like to say two things, which is they talk about that it's something we do it on our own. We love Allah, yari, yari, yari. But most of them, it is because of uh, society, uh, family, father, brother. Uh, when four-year-old, nine-year-old is wearing a scarf, a hijab, it's not you know, by their own choice. That, that is the biggest lie, according to me, at least, my uh, you know, thoughts. And I have seen in my own area, literally, where a four-year-old have been wearing, has been wearing scarf and a nine-year-old. Yeah. Um, and then they are being told that it's written in the Quran that when you are nine or 12, you have to wear it, which is a big fat lie. And, and I agree with uh, Parvinji as well that, you know, for the fact when they wear burqa and niqab, I would personally not feel comfortable because I don't know what is underneath. Uh, you can't see what is, you know, what they're really wearing under that big cloth that's black. And if you see on YouTube, many of the, the videos, you can see the women, they steal and the videos are available, they can see it, I'm not making it up. Um, that is, you know, these two scenarios, something bad can happen, they can steal, that is also a bad thing. Um, and another point that I do think about, which I find very disrespectful from these Muslims in general, you know, whatever is happening in India or in the Western countries, when they demand the need, uh, the acceptance of burqa, niqab or hijab, I feel like it is extremely, extremely disrespectful toward the country they are residing in, who is giving them so many rights. It's like, I personally feel these Muslims are never satisfied. They are never happy. They are never content. And yes, I also feel sometimes they're just ready to, you know, battle, get, get into some mood of, okay, now let's do some panga, you know, I, I, let's create some awareness, you know. But the thing is what they do not understand, it's not even good for them. I mean, that's ridiculous that they can't sit quiet. They can't literally sit quiet, literally for a year and say, right. okay, we won't create a situation. Um, it's like they, they, they get maybe some sort of energy kick out of it. I don't know, mm -hmm. but they must respect the law of India. If the school is saying, do not wear hijab because that is not a, a part of our uh, uniform, then don't wear it. If it says the same about burqa and niqab, then don't wear it. You don't like the law, then move. You can either stay home, cook and get married, or you can go to madrasa and study Allah Allah and that's it. Or you move to a country like Taliban, you know, Afghanistan, where they have the Sharia, they have the Iran, where they have literally tight ruling on Sharia for women. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad, Namaskar.